Namaskar, Maharishika. Thank you. I interestingly had two questions, and my first was the same as Van about two souls in one body, um, and you have answered that. So I will ask my second question. I know that I am a same soul partnership. It's something that's been going on for eight years, and it has been uh, unbelievably extreme at various times, and your teaching has helped me a lot. My question is, what is happening for them? So I've listened to some of your amazing videos and been very um, able to understand more about what's happening from my perspective, and I really appreciate that. It's calmed me down a huge amount. Um, but I'm just curious about what happens for the other person in the same soul connection. For the, for the other person, and this is a generalization because there are exceptions, for the other person, the entire experience is not emotional the way it is for the one who is being pushed towards the Self. So in your case, you are being pushed towards yourself, and unless you sit in Self, unless you are entirely aligned, in surrender, to the, to the impulse of the Soul, to the, to the Truth of your Being, you cannot have much to do with that person. So when you sit in yourself, in your Soul, and you are steadily there, then that contact happens, and again, you can be physically near that person, but the moment you start to waver, and you start to get emotional about everything, and those waves actually start, there is a splitting again, and it moves to two ends of that spectrum, one part of the Soul at this end, one part at the other end. These are all, of course, analogies, because you cannot actually describe these things, in terms that the conceptual is able to grasp. For the other person, the experience is not of a yearning or a longing, generally. It is almost as if they are made to experience things which will make them more able to be around you, safer for you. They go through those experiences outside of this story, because if they were with you, neither party would actually find the way to themselves. So they don't generally have these emotional reactions. It happens once in a while, but they, they open up to you the more you sit in yourself. The more you start yearning for them, the more they move away. So their opening up happens conceptually, it happens emotionally, and interestingly enough, it happens physically. So they sometimes don't even know why they're doing what they're doing, because they're not operating from the same uh, exigency, let's say, that you are. In other words, their way to themselves happens in a different way. It is not the same challenge, that you have. So you can't say, oh, the, the same Soul is there yearning for you as much as you are yearning for them. That is not how it works, because theirs are different challenges. They are different from your challenges, which is why it doesn't make much sense to try to figure that out. Once you're sitting quietly in Self, and when that meeting happens, then you will start to find out. If you get emotionally shaken, again they'll move away. So the art of that is Self-realization, deeper and deeper Self-realization, and that entire story will quiet down and take on a different phase. It is very, very challenging. This is, you know, the dark night of the ego. This is the breaking down of the ego that is trying to control the situation, trying to understand what's going on with the other, trying to figure it out, yearning for the other, wanting something to come from the other side, intellectually approaching it with a very uh, calm question, like, I wonder what happens with the other one, but actually it's all part of that ego trying to control that situation. The only thing you can be concerned about is yourself, in the sense of aligning with 
surrendering to the Truth within yourself and sitting in it without any thought even about the other. Very challenging. <laughs> but yes, that's the way to go. Generally, one can say, as an answer to your question, that that person does not respond the same way at all, or very little, if at all. Yes. Thank you. I hear what you're saying, that they don't have the same emotional response and yearning, but in order to become a better person, to be able to feel the other person, do the experiences line up? I guess an ego death on their behalf as, as well as mine, because I know I've been through one, but I'm still going through one, obviously. <laughs> it is not always necessary for a human being to live and communicate and function, and even actually be um, an expression of their Divine Center, by being emotional. The point is not for the person to be emotional, but for the person to be in surrender. So they are also pushed into surrender, but they are not pushed into surrender the way you are. So it's not necessarily they're having to master their emotions, it could be that they have to uh, let go in the conceptual, to let go of a lot of things and become more transformative, rather than more emotional. So it's a very subtle thing and it's different with each and every one of them. Each and every one is a different story. You can't know about them, because their entire journey is not a journey of Self-Realization, through breaking down of the ego and the emotional, which is what it is with you. That emotional ego has to be broken down, and you have to become master of the, the emotions within yourself. That's your process. It's not the same for them. It's a, it's a long topic, of course, but I mean, I could speak about this for weeks and weeks, non-stop because it's such a fascinating phenomenon, but I'll have to take the next question now, and perhaps you formulate your question further and more precisely, and then come on the next time, and um, we'll try and take that question, if possible. Yes. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you very much. Namaskar, Heather. <laughs>